Hey guys, I'm back with a, another design for you. This time it is a blanket. We're taking a little break from the garments and sweaters and tops. And this is my first fall slash winter slash cozy weather design of the year. So although it's still 90 degrees outside here, winter's coming soon okay so you gotta have a super cozy chunky blanket to make obviously so here's what it looks like i'm gonna try and hold it up so you can see the whole thing okay i might have to show in sections we lift so you can see the bottom it's just a mirrored image here of the top so here's a little close up super cute so this is made with super bulky yarn so it just it's gonna fly off your hook i know when you're working um blankets row by row sometimes it can be repetitive especially if you're using a thinner yarn but because this one is a weight of six yarn and most of the stitches in here is treble crochet so it's seriously just super fast to make this just this took me less than a week to make um so it's made up in three separate panels so you have the first um panel here and you just make two of these so they're exactly the same and then this middle section is one large panel as well it has the three big stripes but it's all connected and then um you'll just attach them together by a row of single crochet here it gives it a little bit more texture and a fun look to it so yeah i wanted just to do something slightly different than the regular norm of rows back and forth so i hope you guys like this one you only need um six skeins of respun i used the respun thick and quick and this is 100 percent recycled polyester you guys so if you are conscious of mother earth and you want to help out a little bit use this yarn it's super um soft too i know sometimes with like the recycled yarn to be like oh it might be scratchy no this one is really really soft i promise um and then it's a super bulky and uh they're like huge huge skeins so you only need three colors of um the i used pumice for the first color this little gray color and then three three skeins of wisteria so three three skeins of each color and just two colors so six skeins total um and then you're also using a nine millimeter hook so super quick almost every single stitch here is treble crochet except for a little bit uh in the beginning you have a little bit of double crochets and then um the trim and where we attached is single crochets but super easy as well you'll be doing a little bit of um changing colors here i don't know if you guys saw when i held it held it up close fun little um color changes uh which are also really easy don't be scared so when you do the last yarn over and pull through and it says to switch colors um you just place the new yarn color on your hook and do that final pull through with the new and you can just switch back and forth um, i show all of that in this video and then the free pattern is also on my blog so if you want to follow along with the written or just use the written instead of the video you can do that i'll link that in the in the description um, and it has like all the stitch counts and row counts and all of that as well uh, and then this is also available as a line brand kit and I always recommend the kits if you know you're gonna make this uh, Pattern that I have I always recommend to grab the kits Especially because they are constantly having coupon codes and sales So basically you're buying the yarn at a discounted price and then they'll throw in the um, digital uh, PDF of my pattern when you buy the kit and you can also change out your yarn colors. so if you don't want these colors that I used in my blanket you can swap it out for uh, any of the other colors that they have listed so I'll link that down below and then of course it's in my Etsy and Ravelry shops if you like the printable version of the pattern so you can grab that um, and I think that's really all you need to know for the pattern. If you want to check out the notes and any other info, exact yardage, all that stuff is on my blog. So just go check out the blog post and I'll just head straight into the tutorial. I hope you guys like it and let me know if you have any questions in the comments and I will catch you guys in the next video. 
Okay, so for our super cozy blanket, you need six skeins total of Line Brands Respawn Thick and Quick. I'm using three skeins in the color Pumice and then three skeins in the color Wisteria. And all that yardage is on my blog post, so you can check that out. And then you're going to need a nine millimeter crochet hook, scissors, a needle to weave in your ends, and then a couple of stitch markers as well. So we're going to get started with the end panels to begin. So just start with a slip knot and then go ahead and insert your hook. And we're going to be starting with a foundation double crochet row. So I'll show you how to do that. You're going to begin by chaining three and then yarn over and insert your hook into that back bump of the very first chain that you made. And then yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first loop only. You have three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through the final two. And that is one foundation double crochet stitch. So do that again, yarn over, insert your hook into the bottom of that stitch that you just made, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So we're just going to do this until we have the correct amount for our starting row. So this basically just combines the a starting chain and row one of patterns. It combines it into just one row. So instead of doing a ton of chains to start off, it kind of just puts those chains within that row one. So you can see those, the little yarn over pull through the first loop. That's our chain that we're making within the row. If you don't want to do it this way, you can totally just make a starting chain instead and work foundation and then work double crochets down the starting chain, but I'm doing it with the foundation and just keep going until you have the correct amount of stitches. So you should have a total of 93 foundation double crochet for row one. And if you need a slower video on how to do that foundation double crochet, I have that on my page as well if you need to go check it out. And then to start off row two, you're going to chain four and turn your work. And this chain four does not count as a stitch. So just remember that when you're doing the chain four, it does not count. So our first stitch is going to be worked into the very first stitch of the row below. So yarn over twice, insert your hook into that very first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first two loops, yarn over, pull through the next two loops, and then yarn over, pull through the final two loops. So that is one treble crochet stitch, and I will show it here again. Yarn over twice, insert your hook into the following stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through the final two. So this stitch is also commonly known as the triple crochet stitch or the treble crochet stitch. And it is very similar to the double, but you're doing that yarn over twice in the beginning. And you're just going to work this stitch into every single stitch all the way across the row for row two. So go ahead and work your way across until you get to the very last stitch. Okay, so you should have a total of 93 treble crochet stitches for the end of row two and now we can begin row three so for row three we're going to start off by chaining three and this does not count as a stitch so just remember that and then you're going to work a double crochet stitch into the very first stitch so chain three and double crochet and now we're going to be doing some front post and back post treble crochet stitches so that first one was a double and now we're going to be doing treble across so yarn over twice and we're going to start off with a front post treble crochet so instead of working it into the top of the stitch we're going to be putting our hook from the front of our work to the back of our work and back to the front so that that post is just laying on our hook and then you complete your treble crochet stitch around the post of the stitch from the row below so that was a front post treble crochet and instead of yarning over and pulling through with the gray to finish the stitch we're actually going to bring in our second color so if you weren't changing colors you could just finish with the gray but we're going to be bringing in color B so just place it over your hook and do that final pull through with color B and then you can kind of tug the tails make sure it's nice and secure um, on the back of your work and then we're going to continue with this color now so for color B we're going to be doing the next treble crochet and this time it's a back post treble crochet so yarn over twice and now put your hook um, in the back of your work so you're going to go from back to front now stick it behind your work and put your hook forward on top of the post and then back through to the back again. 
So this one's a back post treble crochet and you can see the post is laying on my hook but now it's just in the back. And then yarn over, pull up a loop, and then finish off the treble crochet as normal. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And then we're going to be swapping color A and color B every other stitch throughout this row. So just go ahead and drop color B, which we've been working with, the purple color, and we're just going to pick color A back up. So it should just be hanging off the back of your work there and you can just pick it up, place it over your hook and yarn over, and then just finish that last pull through with color A. So we're just swapping back and forth between the colors, it's super easy. And then just leave color B hanging in the back and now we're going to do another front front post treble crochet. So yarn over twice. And again, the front post, you come from the front of your work to the back of your work and pull it back up, finish your treble crochet. And then with that last um, pull through with the yarn to finish the stitch, we're gonna pick color B back up. So we're just going to pick it up, place it on our hook and pull through. So it's really easy to just swap back and forth here as you go. And then just remember that all of your um, purple wisteria color B yarn, you're always doing a back post in this row. And then with the color A, you're doing a front post. So again, with the back post here with color B, and then just finish the treble. And when you get to that last yarn over pull through, you're going to drop color B and pick up color A, yarn over and pull through. So just switching back and forth between color A and color B and switching back and forth between front post treble and back post treble. So super easy, yarn over twice, work your front post. So from the front of your work to the back with your post laying on your hook and then do your treble, switch to color B and then using color B work a back post treble crochet. So yarn over twice and go to from the back of your work to the front of your work and then stick your hook back into the back of your work so the post is laying on your hook in the back and then just finish your treble crochet stitch. So go ahead and repeat this all the way across the row alternating front post and back post and alternating your um, colors as you go and I will meet you at the very end of the row to show you how to finish it off. Okay, and I'm coming up to my last few final stitches here for row three, and I am on color B right now, so I'll just show you a couple more times. I'm working my back post treble crochet with color B, and then I'm going to switch one more time over to color A, and then I'm going to do my final front post treble crochet with color A. And then instead of switching colors, Again, for this one, we're going to finish with a double crochet using color A. So finish that pull through with the color A, and then now just yarn over, insert your hook into the last stitch, and work a regular double crochet. So each, the start of the row and the end of the row, finish with a double crochet. And your stitch count is 91 treble crochets and two double crochets. And for row four, we are just repeating that previous row. So again, you can chain three and turn your work. And then we're starting off the row with a double crochet. You are going to have to cut your yarn at the end of this row. So if you haven't already, just go ahead and cut your yarn, leaving a tail long enough to weave in. And then you can just place it up here so we can use it in this row. So again, we're just repeating um, row three. So after you chain three, we're going to work a double crochet into that very first spot because the chain three does not count. And then we are doing the same thing as before. So front post treble crochet with color A in the next stitch. So again, from front to back, might be a little bit more difficult to see your stitch this time because it's um, tucked on the other side from the previous row. So just know that it is a front post and then place your color B on your hook to finish just like before. And then with color B, we know that we're doing a back post treble crochet. So work your hook from back to front with that post on your hook and then work your treble crochet stitch. And then with that last yarn over pull through, switch back to your gray 
yarn over, pull through, and then we are back to a front post treble crochet. So it's really easy to remember when you have color A on your hook and you're coming up to a um, color A post from the row below, we know that it's going to be a front post. And then when you have color B on your hook and you're coming up to a color B post from the row below, you know it's going to be a back post. So just repeat that all the way across the row, alternating your colors with every stitch and alternating front post and back post with every stitch. Okay, so we're coming up to the end of row four here and I'm going to finish this last front post treble crochet with color A. And then in the final stitch of the row, don't forget to do a double crochet this time instead of a treble. So just yarn over once and insert your hook into the very final stitch to complete row four. And again, we have 91 treble crochet and two double crochet stitches for this row. And for the following row, we're going to be using color B. So go ahead and cut your yarn and then bring color B up to finish this last double crochet stitch of the row. So just do your final pull through with color B, tug the tails, and then later on, you can also tie these tails in a knot. You could do it now to keep them in place or you can do it later on because we are going to do a trim that is worked over it. So after you um, add in the new yarn, we're going to be doing row five. So chain four and the chain four does not count as a stitch. So work one treble crochet into the first stitch. So you're going to be working it through both loops on this first stitch. So both the front and the back for the first, and then for the following stitches, we're going to be working it in the back loop only. So if you don't know what that is, the back loop is the loop that's furthest away from you in the stitch from the row below. Um, so yarn over twice, and in the next stitch, insert your hook in just the back. So instead of under the front and back like that, you're going to put it under just one loop, the one furthest away and then work a regular treble crochet stitch. And for this row, we are still swapping colors back and forth throughout the row. So for that final um, pull through of the yarn, we're going to be bringing in color A. So make sure that you cut color A from the row below and then bring it up and do that final pull through with color A to finish our treble crochet stitch. So just place the yarn on your hook and do your final pull through. And now our working yarn is color A. And again, just like the other rows, we are going to be swapping back and forth and leaving our yarn attached. So yarn over twice and in the back loop only, insert your hook and work a treble crochet. And then in that final pull through, drop color A, pick color B back up and pull it through with color B. And then in the next stitch, yarn over twice and work a treble in the back loop only, and then finish with color A. So again, just swap the yarn colors back out, and we're just going to re repeat this all the way across the row. So when we have color A, we are working a treble crochet stitch into the back loop only of the color B from the row below. And then when we have color B on our hook, we're working a treble into the back loop only of the color A from the row below. So now the um, yarns are swapped from the previous row. So you know where you're at in the pattern. Excuse the child hand being stuck into the video. Um, so just treble crochets all the way across the row, swapping between color A and color B as you go. And I'll meet you guys at the end of the row to show you how to complete it. Okay, so we still have color B. We're going to finish this TR in the back loop only. And then our final stitch is one TR in the last stitch. So make sure you do it through both the front and the back loop for your last treble crochet of the row. And you have a total of 93 treble crochet stitches to complete that row. So now we are going to be on row six and you do not have to cut the yarn this time. We're just going to start off um, by chaining four and then you're just going to work one treble crochet into each stitch across this row So no changing yarn colors no swapping back and forth You're just going to stay with color B throughout the whole thing and you're going to be working them through both the front and the back loop so um, 
make sure they go under both loops as you're working this row and it's just regular treble crochet stitches. So go ahead and work one treble crochet stitch for each stitch all the way across. Okay, and then when we get to the end of row six, we're going to do our final pull through with color A. So we're switching colors here and just pull through with color A. And then for row seven, we're just going to be repeating the previous row, but now using color A instead of color B. So go ahead and chain four and then work one treble crochet stitch into each stitch all the way across the row, working in both the front loop and the back loop. So when you get to the end of this current row, which is row seven, you'll have a total of 93 treble crochet still. And with that last yarn over and pull through on your final stitch, you'll want to switch back to color B and then use color B for row eight, working one treble crochet stitch in each across. And then when you get to the end, switch back to color A and then you will be working one treble crochet in each stitch across for that row, which is row nine. And then again for rows 10 and 11. So it should look like this when you're all done. So we had that current row with color A, we switched to color B and did a row, and then we switched back to color A and did three more rows. So now we have a total of 11 rows in this end panel. And you can just go ahead and tie off your work and then you have to go back and make a second one of these. So make sure you have two of these end panels. Okay, so this is our main panel here and I will show you how to work this up really quick. We start off with a foundation double crochet row. We have um, a amount of rows of treble crochet and then we finish with another double, switch to color A, have a double, have the rows of treble, finish with a double, switch back to color B and then have a row of double, all bunch of rows of treble and then finish with a double. So I'll show you guys how to do that. So you're gonna start off with color B and we're going to be doing the same thing as we did with the end panels by starting with a foundation double crochet row. So using color B, create a slip knot and then chain three and we're going to work our foundation double crochets. So again, you're going to be working into that back bump and then working your foundation double crochet stitches. I'm doing them a little bit quicker here. If you need to watch a slower version, you can go back to the beginning of the video or watch the separate video that I have on my YouTube channel. Um, and for this main panel here, we're going to be working a total of 53. So total of 53 foundation double crochet for row one of this main panel. So go ahead and do the correct amount of um, stitches for this row and then I will show you guys what to do throughout the rest. So I'm just going to do a quick little swatch here. The panel that I showed you just a couple of minutes ago is what we are making. And I'm just gonna show you a quick version of it because it's very simple. So after you do the row one of foundation double crochet, you're going to chain four and then just work treble crochet stitches all the way across the row. And you're gonna do that for rows two through 11. So this is row two here. So you're gonna work rows three through 11 as well, just doing chain four and one treble crochet into each stitch. So very easy. So just work your row one of the foundation double crochet, rows two through 11 of treble crochet, and then we are going to finish off this color with another row of double crochet. So let's say that I have all 11 rows complete here, one of them being a double crochet row and 10 of them being a treble. And then to finish off with this color, we are just going to be um, doing another row of double crochet. So chain three, turn your work and then work double crochet stitches into each stitch across. When you come to the end of row 12, we're going to finish this last stitch here with um, color A. So we did all 12 rows with color B and now for row 13, we're bringing back in color A and this is going to be a, another double crochet row here. So just pull through with color A, chain three, turn your work and work one double crochet into each stitch across the row. So your stitch count here is not changing. Um, it's going to stay 53 stitches. 
So after you finish row 13, the current row, you're going to have rows 14 through 23, working a treble crochet into each stitch. And then you're going to have row 24, a final row of double crochet with color A. And then at the end of the row, switch to color B and then do the same thing. Row 25, chain three and work a double crochet row. And then rows 26 through 35, a treble crochet row. And then row 36, which will be your final row of this main panel is a double crochet row. So this is what it looks like when you are all complete with that main panel. So you have this chunk of color B here and then a chunk of color A and then a chunk of color B. So again, row one is a double crochet row, two through 11 is treble, row 12 is double, switch to color A and have a row of double for row 13 and then rows 14 through 23 is treble and then a final row of double with color A and then you switch to color B again, row 25 is double, 26 through 35 treble, 36 double. And now once we have those panels complete, we need to join them together. So that's what I'm going to show you here. So we're going to be placing our um, first end panel, doesn't matter which one, because they're both the same, and place it against the main panel that we just made, wrong sides facing. So make sure your wrong sides are facing each other. And for this particular pattern, row one is the right side of our work for all three panels. So wrong sides are facing so that this row of single crochet that we're doing is on the right side of the blanket for this um, cute detail that it provides. So just begin with a slip knot and then you can use whichever color you want. I'm going to use color B here. And then I've just lined up my first end panel and my main panel. So when we're working the end panel, our stitches are going through the sides of the rows and you wanna line it up evenly with row 11 of the end panel. So we're going to work one single crochet stitch for each stitch of the main panel. So I've slip stitch to join, working through both the main panel and the first end panel, and then just chain one, and then insert your hook again into the same spot and in the same stitch and work a single crochet. And then we're going to line up our work evenly here, working our hook through the ends of the row of the main panel, but through the stitch of the end panel. So you just wanna try and get it as even as possible and just line up the stitch from the end panel with um, the ends of the rows where you're at on the main panel. And then I forgot to point this out a second ago, but you, it's also very helpful here to use stitch markers. So you can grab a couple stitch markers if you want and put them in place to keep, make sure you're on track and that we're seaming this together evenly. So because our uh, end panel had a total of 93 stitches, you can count out a total of 31 stitches on row 11 of the end panel and place your stitch marker into that 31st stitch here and then line it up evenly where the color change is. So you can see I just put it in the 31st stitch and then I put it right there at the seam where the colors changed um, in the main panel row. And then you can do this for um, the next set of 31 stitches too. So you place that one and then you can count a, another 31 stitches and put in a second stitch marker here and then line it up with the color changes as well. That way you make sure you're perfectly even as you're sewing this together. So you're gonna have a total of 93 single crochets for this joining part and you're just going to make sure that they're evenly placed in um, the main panel of the work since we don't have an actual stitch to work into. So if you find that you're coming out a little uneven, you might need to pull back a little bit and redo a few of the stitches. But once you get going, it's very simple. You can see how it's lining up nice and even. So just do this all the way across the row. You can remove the stitch markers once you get to them and then just keep going for a total of 93 single crochet. When you get to the end of your work, you can just go ahead and yarn over, pull through and tie off your work. And then we need to repeat this on the other side as well. Okay, so now you can grab your second end panel and take it and place it on the other side of the main panel at the ends of the rows. 
and now we're just going to single crochet across this one just like we did on the first one so again you can place those stitch markers count out 31 stitches place your stitch marker through both of the panels um, where the color changes on the main panel and then count out another 31 and place a second stitch marker um, through both panels as well just to keep your work nice and even and then again you're going to just slip stitch to join into the corner stitch of both the main and the end panel and then chain one and do a single crochet into that same stitch so then you can just work your single crochet stitches across just like you did before making sure your panels are nice and even um, working around the posts um, of the main panel and through the stitches of the end panel for a total of 93 single crochet Okay, so now that we've single crocheted um, our panels together, we're just going to add a little trim along the sides of the blanket. So we have the top of the blanket and the bottom of the blanket have those foundation double crochet rows from the end panel. Um, and so for the sides, we want to make it look a little bit neater and crochet directly over our ends. So we're just going to take color B, slip stitch to join in either corner of the blanket, doesn't matter um, which corner you join in as long as you're working um, down the sides of the blanket here to work over all those ends from the end panel. So just slip stitch to join and work a single crochet and then you're just going to single crochet evenly down the side. So again because we're not working into an actual stitch we're just working our single crochets around the posts of those rows like I'm doing here. Um, you might have to play around with it a little bit to see how many stitches you need. It might be different for everyone, but I did just about two single crochet for every double crochet row and then three single crochet for the rows that I had a treble crochet or a chain four at the end. Um, so the stitch count for this part really um, isn't super important as long as your work is straight and even. Um, if it looks like it's wavy, that means you have too many stitches, you should pull back out and do less. Um, and, then, and then as you're going, just work over the ends here. You can see that I'm just placing the tails of the yarn um, over my hook and working the single crochet stitches over it as I go. If you haven't already, you can tie um, the two ends together to, into a knot to keep it nice and secure so that they don't come undone. And then just work your single crochet stitches directly over it just um, like I'm doing here. So you're just going to do this down the side of the first end panel and then into the stitches of the main panel and then down the side of the second end panel and then just repeat it on the other side. So we're only putting um, a row of single crochet onto the sides of the blanket, not the top and bottom. You could go all the way around if you want, but I didn't think it needed it and I liked the look of just having the color be on the edges. Okay, so here I am coming to the end of this trim. So I'm just gonna uh, fasten off. You could keep going along the bottom here. Um, and if not, fasten off and just repeat the same thing on the other side of your work. And after that, just weave in your ends and cut them off. And that is it for this blanket tutorial. And let me know if you guys have any questions and I'll catch you in the next one.